And this evening, we have been very lucky and blessed to be joined by Michael Riley, who is a local artist and who gave us a wonderful autobiography that I want to get into. We also have some samples of his work. Michael, thank you very much for joining us, and Happy New Year. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Sorry to scratch That's you there. Right. Um, I want to get to the art, but I want to talk about, I was reading through your autobiography, yes. and the thing that struck me is when we were just talking to John and Deb, they mentioned people in, and that have influenced other people. Right. And you were, there's a whole paragraph here that's dedicated to one of the people who influenced you. Would you yes. like to talk about him a little bit? Oh, I would love to. I, I, Shona, I think that that's something that's well overdue. Um, the man's name who influenced me, in addition to so many people, mm -hmm. um, but in particular, as far as art, it's Mr. Theodore E. Wells, the first, um, the late great Mr. Theodore E. Wells. Uh, Mr. Wells was a teacher of mine at Bancroft Middle School, but more than that, he was an inspiration. Uh, he showed me that I had potential to, to pursue you know, my interest in art, and he made sure that I participated in uh, various uh, citywide contests you know, and, and you know, get, get used to uh, competing. And, and he just was just a beautiful person, um, well-read person, well-traveled person. Just, a, just an inspiration. He's everything that a young man could strive to be. You know, it's amazing how, when I was reading that, like I said, I want to talk about that first. Because right. it's amazing how when you look back on your life, you think right. about that teacher. Right. Mine was Diana Taylor. You know, okay. she lived okay. in Los Angeles, and she was the one that was like, you know what, I see something, right. and I want to nurture it. And yes. I look at the result of that nurturing. Yes. Um, talk to us a little bit about these pieces we have displayed here. Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, let's start with this one. This piece here, should I hold this way? I think or? that if you hold it like straight in front of you. Okay. This piece is titled, In His Hands, it's a pastel rendering, and it depicts the fact that, in my belief, I believe that God is in control, and that myself, I need to humble myself and, and be of service to others. So this tells me that, you know, I as a human have a finite amount of time to do things. Mm. So I need to rely upon him so that I can continue to serve. Okay, and then below it, I think if you leave that there, they can, I'm sorry? If you, if you leave that there, they can see it a okay. little bit, but can you talk about this one? Yes, this piece here, the title is Afrogenesis. And for me, it was um, a, Go ahead. It was a special project um, because I, I worked, uh, from two statues that were given to me by my mother in 1975. So I set up a still life. And as I was doing the rendering, it, it made me feel as if it were uh, a conversation taking place. And it represented our um, code, you know, we, we have uh, interdependence as a people. And this is just a dialogue as a people, you know, leading to the continuation of our struggles and everything. You, that's something you said at the bottom of your biography, a silently a powerful conversation between the artist and his audience. Yeah. And that's really, I went to a Renoir exhibit, yes. um, I think Friday, okay. and when I was looking at his artwork, I'm like, this is amazing because right. he's, you know, he's no longer with us, but there's something that he was trying to get across yes. to us. Right. And I mean, it carries through. It doesn't matter if you're Renoir or Michael Riley or, you know, yes. Yes. not that I have any artistic ability, but Sean Roy, <laughs> you know, but it's just one of those things that it really, really comes, it really comes through. Right. And then I'm, I'm assuming this is Kira, your daughter in this picture? Yes. Kira was the model for this piece. However, um, I wanted to show it to the public because it represents, um, you know, a father showing his daughter the way to 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 um, my personal savior, Jesus Christ, who's up there in the corner. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, he's he. You may you may not notice it right away. You have to look closely. But he's up there, and uh, she's looking at this crossroad. But he's keeping her straight on that path. I See, love my daughter. And that's 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 another one. My sister is an artist too, and okay. she does. Um, are you self-taught for the most part? Well, you no. went to, okay. Uh, my sister is self-taught, and 
the the idea that you got across there. Right. We can look at it and we can see something, right. but when you hear the the artist yeah. explain it, right. it totally changes the meaning because right. we see that it's just you know a father and a child, and then we can see the savior. But that side road, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as a father, you know that you're trying to guide her in the right yes. direction. Yes, that's amazing. Now the other thing I wanted to touch upon in your biography yes. was you have this beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. and then you talk about poetry. Yes. So the transition from art to poetry. Can you talk about that a little sure bit? Thing. Um, as I mentioned, you know, and you talked about a conversation. Uh, I look towards um, my art or my poetry as a means for me to communicate, you know, the messages and inspirations that come upon my heart and enter into my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it just so happens as from an early age, I always loved English and I loved writing and I also loved art. And I love basketball too, <laughs> you know, and something had to give. So, uh, you know, um, so I, I just, it, it's just natural for me, you know. So in addition to the poetry, it also says you're writing a book. Yes. Growing, Growing, Grown. Yes. Talk a little bit, little bit about that. Okay. Um, well, I'm working with some really good people who are helping me on the project, uh, uh, namely uh, Judith Roan and uh, Miss B.B. Coker. Mm -hmm. um, they have been consulting on this project um, and we're going to get together and and finalize you know what it's a, it's maybe 98 percent done and then we want to find out the best means of getting it published uh, it's a collection of images mm -hmm. and poetry and a lot of them you'll find are interdependent and you know there's a um, uh, quite a connection between the written word and the visual image that's on the adjacent page. So well, we'd love to, to have you back when you when you uh, publish that, when it's finished yes. in its entirety. Um, in, in reading the notes over also, it, it's very clear to me that you understand where your gift came from. Yes. It's evident in your art and it's evident in the notes that you took here. Yes. So when you're painting something, when you're writing something, yes. does that make you feel closer to God? it takes place because of him. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and to answer your question, anything I do, as long as I'm following, you know, the right way, it, it brings me closer to him. If I'm just having a friendly conversation, that brings me closer. But to actually exercise this gift that he's given to me, yes, it does. Um, and I, I truly do believe that my work is inspired by my relationship with God and my relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know? And, and truly, I get all of this credit sometimes, you know, walking amongst Us. our brethren uh -huh. and people, right. but, you know, all of the praise and all of the credit goes to him. I'm simply a channel. Now, we have seen your artwork. We want to hear some of your poetry. All right. Um, I think you wanted to recite, What If I Wasn't There? Yes. Okay, please. All right. Well, this poem goes out to, um, to anyone and everyone who can relate to... Um, having a need to, to obtain guidance and to rely upon something greater than yourself. And this poem is about uh, an, a guardian angel revealing himself to a young urban youth. Remember that time when you were sleeping on your grandma's couch? A blast shattered the, grandma, a, a blast shattered the glass and grandma's eyes filled with tears. Yet her only concern was how to quiet your fears. Don't cry, baby, it was only thunder, or so she told you. For in the wall above your head was a hole that a man could put his fist through. Remember that time you snuck out of the house so you and your cousin could go to the store before it closed? The shopkeeper chased you all out and fired a shot in the air. Once again, or so you thought, you later realized your cousin was stealing and paid with his life for what y'all should have bought. What about that time when you and your friends were hanging out in the park? I thought they told you not to go out after it got dark. Now look what happened. This time, you survived, even though there were bodies everywhere. Let me ask you an important question. What if I wasn't there? That's wonderful. Yeah, I apologize. I stumbled over it because sometimes I just get so excited. Plus, it's freezing in here. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but that, yeah. I mean, when, you, when you're writing something like yeah. that, where does the inspiration come from? Is that what you feel personally or is that witnessing something? Yeah, actually the inspiration, um, it's a lot of my things are autobiographical um, because I didn't always walk a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why my audience is, you know, it consists of the people who may sometimes stand in the balance, 
um, somebody was there for me and I'm, I want to be there for them and I want to show them that they can try and do, you know, better, you know. That's wonderful. So that's what it is.